Zero accounting software. Sales by customer account and item graphs. Get ready to be an office hero with Zero. Support accounting instruction by clicking the link below, giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website, broken out by category, further broken out by course, each course then organized in a logical, reasonable fashion, making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a YouTube page. We also include added resources such as Excel practice problems, PDF files, and more like QuickBooks backup files when applicable. So once again, click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it. Here we are in our custom Zero homepage. We set up in a prior presentation, scrolling in a bit, holding down control up on the scroll wheel, currently at 175% zoom in. Opening the demo, doing so by selecting the reset item, which will reset the data and open the demo at the same time. We're going to be opening up a couple tabs up top, duplicating tabs, if you will, to put our major financial statement reports in as we have done every time. Right click in the tab up top, duplicating it. Right clicking on the duplicated tab to yes, duplicate it again with a double duplication. Back to the middle tab accounting drop down we want the balance sheet tab to the right accounting drop down we want the income statement profit and loss p l back to the tab to the left and the date drop down customize that date drop down 2022 the end of the month update that's the setup process we've been doing every time we're looking at other reports now focusing in on graphs that we can potentially make using data to give a pictorial representation which might be useful for reporting purposes and we've looked at for example on the balance sheet you might make like a graph out of your your assets compared to your total assets your liabilities and equities we looked at a graph related to the receivables by customer a graph for the payables you know by vendor and now let's go to the income statement and we can break out multiple things on the income statement the sales line item you can see usually only has like sales or something or a couple revenue accounts on the income statement. But oftentimes, depending on how we're doing our accounting, we might be able to generate other reports that, that will be breaking that information out by say customer and possibly by, uh, by item, the thing that we sold, service items. So we could make graphs on that, say what's the biggest thing that we sell? We could show that pictorially and we can make a, a nice pictorial graph uh, by who our biggest customers are possibly if we could pull that data. We can also make graphs you know, for the expenses down here by category of, of expenses, for example, and that can give us some percentages and graphs and whatnot on that, just to give us some ideas of how we might add some graphs to our presentation. So I'm gonna right click on the tab up top, duplicate it. Let's focus in on that revenue side of things. So let's go to our accounting dropdown and our reports. And then if I scroll down, we had an income and expense report down here. Where was that? It's right here under the payable and receivable. So there's an income and uh, expense by contact. Contact in this case, if we're gonna focus on the income basically being customers. So if I go into that one, we uh, can see our data there. Let's do this for the year of 2022. So I'll say the beginning date, January 1st to December 31st. So there's our information. We want the columns uh, compare with, with years. I don't want any comparisons. I just want the current data and then I'll update it. So there is our information. And so now I want to filter it on just the income. I don't want the expense stuff. I just want the income stuff for now. You could do the expenses in a similar fashion, breaking it out by who we paid vendor in essence. So now I'm going to, I'm going to filter it and I want to filter it by the, I think the type down here type, and we just want the income. So I just want the income stuff, not the expense stuff, apply the filter, update it boom so there we have it now the total here should tie out you would think the 30,658.86 should tie out to the income statement it's a little bit off 
note that sometimes that could happen because unlike the sub reports, we looked at the balance sheet. When I go over to the balance sheet here, we looked at the sub ledgers, the sub reports for the accounts payable and the accounts receivable. Those reports or in the accounting system, when we add information to those accounts, zero is more likely to kind of force us to enter a, a contact, a vendor or a customer to make sure that the sub ledger ties out. When I go to the income statement, the sales, it's usually, most software is usually not as stringent, meaning if you post something to the sales and you don't include a customer, you could you could still do that, right? So if you entered data to, had a deposit that you just recorded to income, but you didn't add a customer to it, then it's not gonna, then your, your sales here is gonna be different than the sales by customer because you have some sales that weren't adding the customer line item. And that's more and more likely to happen if, for example, you're doing your your revenue recording by uh, bank feeds. So if you just have the bank feeds coming in and, and you don't put the customer line when you have the receive money, then it's likely that you're not, you, you may not uh, have that added detail. So just, that's the first thing to kind of understand when you're making these kind of graphs, you want it to tie in here if it doesn't, then you might be able to kind of see why or make an adjustment for it so everything ties in when you're putting together your reports if you have a systematic accounting system where you're only you know increasing revenue when you in when you record a transaction that includes a customer then it'll tie out right so let's go over here and say all right so if i have that what i'm going to do is export it to excel and possibly make say a a uh, a graph based on this. Let's make a pie chart for it. So we're going to say, let's export it to Excel. And so there we have it. And so now it's, so here it is. I'm going to enable the editing. I'm going to pull this onto my other data file over here so that I'm going to put all my graphs kind of on this file. I'm going to hit the plus button at the right. And I'm going to double click on this tab. I'm going to say that this is going to be my my income by customer data let's say and then i'm just going to copy this whole thing putting my cursor on the triangle to select the entire worksheet Control c or right click and copy and then i'm going to minimize and put that in a1 or the entire sheet with the triangle Control v or right click and paste and then i'm going to scroll up there's our data so now I can I could say, okay, maybe I want to keep that as my data tab. I'm going to double click down here, just call this data. And now let's let's just adjust it from here. So I'm going to go ahead and adjust the whole thing. All I really want is this and the contact and, and the and the income amounts so that I can make a graph from it. So I'm going to say, all right, let's delete everything up top. I don't need these rows. I'm going to put my cursor on the one all the way down to six, right click and delete, right click and delete. I don't need the total down here. I'm gonna put my cursor on column 17, right click and delete. And then what I'm gonna do is get rid of the type. I don't need the type, they're all the same. Put my cursor on column B. I keep on saying column instead of rows when I was on the rows. These are columns, those were rows. Right click and delete. And there's just my raw data. Now, I usually like to make a table out of it so that I can then sort the data from top to bottom. So I'm gonna select the whole thing. I'm gonna go to the insert and then table. Got a table around the whole thing. We do have a header up top, so I'm gonna keep that checked off. Okay, there it is. And then I'll typically sort it from highest to lowest over here, Z to A. So there we have it. And now we can just take this data, and include a chart. We might want a total down below. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go to the table tab and have the total. So there's our total down below. And then we can just add a chart with it. So I could select all of this and possibly, possibly we want a pie chart again. So I'm gonna go to insert and say that we have a pie chart. Let's hit the drop down. You also have the recommended items here. So sometimes They've got some nice charts that you can do in the recommended ones. Like here's a neat, instead of a standard bar chart, you could do something like this, which is a little bit interesting on the visuals and so on. But we'll do our pie chart. So let's not get ahead of ourselves. 
we're gonna go to insert and then let's do a pie chart boom pull this over here so what that is doing is basically just taking taking all of our numbers divided by the total and I'm gonna F4 on this one copy that down boom and then I'll sum this up just so we can see how the pie chart works it adds up to one and make this a percent and so that's basically what it's doing now I've got a whole bunch of stuff that it's too 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 much stuff here so I'm gonna have to group some of these together so maybe I say one two three four five six maybe everything else let's do seven everything else I put into other so I'm just gonna take this whole thing five six three eight fifty I'm gonna say five six three eight point five zero everything from there down nine to sixteen I'm gonna delete and I'm just gonna call this other boom so so now we've got our pie chart up top like this and this this little bar chart looks a little bit kind of a neat a neat bar chart way to look at it down here in the suggested charts so I can expand this down and we've got a nice little bar chart I could delete that that doesn't help me and then if I want if I want that on a new tab I can add a new tab over here and I can call this you know income by customer or whatever I can call this let's call it the sales graphs let's put all our sales graphs over here and I can copy that and put that over here for my sales graph boom boom let's put the layout let's put the layout here to uh, landscape I can make this a little bit larger then I should probably adjust the look and feel of it but I'm, I'm not going to get into it right now I could put my other chart because I kind of like this where'd the other one go whatever I lost it anyways we'll keep it there we got another one to do so that that's one way you can look at the data now another way you can look at the data is I could go over here and say what if I want to see the data by by uh by what we sold so in that case i can go to the accounting drop down reports and i think it's way at the bottom they got a sales by item sales by item and i'll go into that one and let's make this for the year january january to december so there it is and there's our data so notice this one doesn't tie in. There's like, they don't have a lot of items up top because as we entered the data here, if I go into the balance sheet or let's go into the income statement, the sales items, when we, when we entered the invoices and receive payments, they didn't use items oftentimes. So if I go into this invoice, for example, we, we've got uh, the, the invoice doesn't include an item code. And if you don't use the item codes, then you're going to lose some of the added data that you can have with these sub reports. If you had used, if we used it, so, and that might be okay if that's the system you want to use, but it's usually easier to populate invoices and receive payment forms or money in forms if we have items, right? Because it records the thing we're selling and then your report over here will tie out breaking your income line out by item which can be useful so so this one you know they have the reconciliation down here but we just have the items included up top but let's just export this and and make a little report on this number just to practice with that so if i go into excel down here i'm going to export it to excel there's our data and so we're going to say there's our data i'm going to copy this whole thing Control C. I'm going to put a new tab down here and I'm going to double click on the name and say this is income income uh, by by item data. I'll put that in A1 or select the entire worksheet with the arrow, right click and paste it. I'm going to hold down control, scroll up a bit 
and then I'm just going to sort this data to what we want to see. All I need are basically the, the totals over here. And the totals are not a formula, so I don't really have to worry about messing anything up when I delete everything else. So I don't need anything up top, so I'm going to put my cursor on row one, get the rows right this time, to row four, right click the selected area, delete. I don't want this blank space, so I'm going to put my cursor on row two, right click, delete. And I don't need this other sub thing below. I don't need the total. So I'm going to put my cursor on seven row to 14 or 16 or whatever. Doesn't matter how far down you go and delete it. And then I'm going to get rid of columns B, putting my cursor on B to C, right click and delete those and column C, right click and delete that. You could add a table. You probably, so let's, let's go ahead and add the table. So I'll select these. I'll go into the uh, insert and make it into a table. Boom. We can add a total line. Total should still add up to the total that we had on that original report. And then I could sort it. I like to sort it from Z to A to see the top to the bottom. If I do another pie chart kind of thing, it's going to be this divided by this F4 and copy that down. If I sum it up, it's gonna add up to one, making that into a percent, boom. So that's the percents we would expect. And then we could just highlight this, go up top to insert, make a pie chart or whatever chart. You could do the suggested charts again. So there's the suggested charts that they have. Pretty neat, I'll just make it into a pie chart though, boom. And so there it is. And we might, you, you know, you might want it looking a little bit different or something, possibly, possibly having the numbers in there. So we'll do that one. You could move the numbers, you know, out, out a bit. So they're not like on top of each other or whatever. So, so there you have it. And then I could, I might, delete this one over here and then copy this whole chart and put it on my my sales graph down here so there's my other sales by thing we sold and so that could be a pictorial representation then if i want to print this entire report i don't want to show the data tabs this one and and this one so i'm going to select hold down shift those two right click and hide them so that when I print the report I'm going to go back to uh, a data tab this one and go to insert or file and print to the cute PDF printer entire workbook but then when I go down to the end of it it's just going to show that graph and this graph it's not showing the data the you know the data tabs because we hid them so that's a nice tool to be able to use. These are, we're doing this quite quickly and somewhat sloppily. I'm going to unhide those by selecting one of these, holding down shift and going to the end, right click and unhide this one. And then same thing, right click and unhide. Boom. So now we've got our data tabs back and we can, we can uh, adjust them. So just a, 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 there's a bunch of different graphs and it is useful to use, to, to look at what Excel thinks as a graph might be good. So if you insert these graphs and you look at their recommended graphs, but once you have whatever system you want down, then you can kind of do the same thing for your reporting purposes as, as a bookkeeper and then put in your graphs into whatever possibly a uh, package of reports you put together and if you use kind of this excel format of it exporting reports to excel and then making your your package you can make one pdf file with all the stuff on like one pdf file and like i say printing all this stuff just reporting it as a bookkeeper or an accountant is half you know that it makes gives people confidence in you if it looks nice if you got some if you can see how if they are confident that you can just adjust the data a few different ways, even though it's fairly simple to do once you do it a few times.